This software is QGIS um, and we're going to use this to kind of export our TIFF files into STLs. So um, I think I've linked you the website to get QGIS and to get the plugin that's required. And then once we've got that, we can start doing our tiles. So what's quite good is, what we'll do is we'll start with just the South Island. Um, but what's quite cool is here we can press the make line glass and we can see which tiles are South Island. So then we can go and find you know, the point where we get to say Wellington and we can stop doing the island. Because um, we'll just work on the South Island for now because we might actually do a different scale for the North Island which isn't as hilly so we might be able to pull those hills up a little bit more. Um, but basically, once you've got QGIS installed and the, the plugin installed, um, you can actually grab your um, files, to files, I've just got some random ones here, and drag them straight into the software. It takes a little bit of time and then you'll get your while you'll see a bit more of the detail of the TIFF. Um, and then that's it really, you just go into raster. As long as you've got this installed, you'll have DEM to 3D, 3D printing. Click on that. And um, this section is really important to get right. If we keep this whole consistent with all the files, um, our map will be good, but we go import settings. And... Uh -huh. Yeah, so I've, I've saved some settings already, and if I double click that, they take a couple of seconds to come up. Um, and we just might need to make sure that we get all of these settings exactly right on each one. And one thing we've got to think of as well is when you do the next tile, um, the X, Y values actually change. So once I bring in tile Q, F, for example, which will be over here, these numbers will actually change. And um, when they do, say if we've got random numbers there, or no numbers there, you click on this button here and it just says click, select full extent. So once you click that, and again it takes a few seconds to load, but it'll trace around the new square that you bring in. Even if we bring in a new file, it'll have different uh, coordinates. Um, on here because they're just, I guess, longitude, latitude coordinates. Um, but it'll be looking for the ones that are over here. Um, cool, that looks good. But when I reposition that, I lose a few of my settings here. So these are really important. Spacing 0 0.1. Um, I've gone a bit smaller than recommended because it looks considerably better. Um, and it'll affect how we do our print. Now, our width is obviously our blocks um, but our blocks times three because I've also gone three rows and three columns and that's going to divide the sections into three blocks so if we're using 100 mil blocks we'd have 300 but it looks like we'll probably go 95 mil blocks um, so 285 and they should be ratio locked there which gives us a scale of 1 to 220 229,950. Um, vertical exaggeration, we're going to 1.5. Um, looks pretty spot on. I've had done quite a few tests with that. And then height is also really important. Um, negative 50. Um, and this will drop the sea level just a little bit. Um, and the, the advantage of doing that is when we get to especially the North Island or even Christchurch, the, the area above sea level is really, really low. Um, so you, can, you pretty much can't see where the map ends and then the wood starts. And it looks, it looks really funny. So dropping that by 50 mil, at least you get like a nice outline of the whole country as well. Uh, uh, sweet, that all looks good. Essentially exports STL. Um, yes. And create a folder or whatever to export them into and then just click save um, 
builds STL first and then it um, creates the actual files. Uh, you can keep that running in the background. What I've actually noticed is that this section here is, it, when I put it in the background, it does run a bit slower. So when it's in the foreground, it runs faster. Don't know whether that's a thing with the, the software or not. Um, and what we get out of this is these files here. I think these are the ones we're going for here. We'll get our individual blocks that we're ready to chuck into Fusion 360. So these are like the tallest, this is around Aoraki, this is the tallest section that we've got in whole country. So they look quite extreme, but it just means that when we get to areas like um, Banks Peninsula, somewhere around here, something like this I think, um, then you still get a bit of definition in those hills without pushing the other ones higher, um, you get kind of nothing over here. So 1.5 is a really good number for that. Um, again, when this is done, basically I... What do I do? Delete this layer. Move layer. Yep. And then I'll go and get my new layer. Um, so this is up in the north a little bit more. Uh, go back to my Den 3D printing, which is doing its job now, so I can't actually do it quite yet until this one's done. Um, but my settings should stay the same, but what will happen is I will... Um, these, these will be in the XY coordinates will be in the wrong spot, so I'll have to click that button there again, reposition those coordinates, and then I might lose a few things, so I'll just, um, I mean I know these off by heart now, but just for the first few checking, because if one goes off, uh, uh, everything will look crazy, but 0 0.1, 1.5, 3 by 3, and 285 by 285, and then a height of negative 50, um, yeah, all quite important, but that's pretty much the process with every tile. Um, one thing I did wonder is whether, yeah, no, I'll, I might have a little see if I can work that out. Um, this other thing that I had in mind, but other than that, that's kind of the process that we have to go through essentially with all the tiles. And I think if we just stick with the um, South Island for now, We'll, we'll revisit the North Island um, later.